G'day and welcome back to my hobby room. Now look, I have been accused of a horrendous crime. and horrendous crime. Yes, I have been accused of doing something that is disgusting, despicable. Something that ruins the hobby for all of us modelers. Yep, and you're probably guilty too. What am I on about? Well, it's the stash. Apparently, the stash is evil. The stash is going to destroy the hobby. Can we say that? Can we say that? But apparently, the stash is causing all the problems these days with people's hobbies. Yeah, yeah. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? Sounds unbelievable. But apparently, it is true. And I'm going to show that in this video called The Special Harry's Informative Topic. Bass, did you come up with this topic? Oh, she comes up with these craziest acronyms. Anyhow, enough of that. If you want to know more about my... Yeah. <laughs> Hang in there. Here it comes. Roll the music. So what am I on about? What is this thing? What is this accusation? Well, I think we need a little context. So let's go back quite a few years to the 60s. That's a lot of years ago, especially for some of you people. Yes, I'm a baby boomer. Can't you tell? Big grey old beard, old fart. Anyhow, back in the 60s, when I started scar modelling, uh, my stash was zero, okay? I'd walk down to the corner shop, you know, where it was a news agent. They had airfix kits in plastic bags and I'd buy one. You know, usually it'd take me about four weeks or so to save up for it. I'd put it on lay-by or lay-away or whatever you call it. Or, you know, I'd save the shackles under my pillow in the room, try and hide them from the tooth fairy, that sort of thing. And um, I'd pick up my kit, go home, and I'd build it. I mean, technically, I probably had a stash of one, but only for that period of walking from the shop to when I got home. And I built it that day. That was it. So that went on for quite some time. And then come birthdays and Christmas, that sort of thing, my family went, hang on, this guy's got an addiction, you know. Little Harry here, he likes gluing those little plastic things together. He likes staying in his room with the windows and the doors shut and everything and smelling all that glue. Yes, that's where it all started. <laughs> that's where my problem started. Anyhow, so on those occasions of gift giving, I would get one, two, maybe three kits. Suddenly I had a stash. I'd had, you know, two or three kits, and I'd build one that day, so my stash had decreased dramatically that day, and then the next couple of weeks I'd build all of those. And so by the end of the month they were gone again, and I'd be saving up, and going back on that cycle of saving and buying from the shop. So my stash never really grew. I didn't have a stash for, oh, you know, at least a decade or longer than I was building when I was a kid. Not at all. Never. Even in my early 20s, I was still building models. I was only buying the odd one and then pretty well building it, you know, in my spare time until I finished it. It was rare I had anything more than two. The only difference would be I had the odd wooden kit. Like, you know, I had a big Newport, huge big thing, wood, you know, all wooden ribs and everything. And, and you'd put tissue paper over it and you'd put, you know, the epoxy sort of stuff on it. Um, dope, dope, okay. Naughty dope. This is stuff you buy in bottles and you spread it all over. Yeah, anyhow, you dope it, okay? And sure, I'd have that probably as a side project and I'd slowly be working on that. I did night shift for a while at the TV station in my early 20s when I first got on television. And each night when I came home, I was wide awake from like working and I couldn't go to sleep. So I had the Newport sitting on the kitchen table and I'd get it out and I'd do a little bit. So yeah, I had a maybe a work in progress like that, something I was building, maybe another kit. There, there wasn't much of a stash. It didn't really happen. Then we come to now, the 21st century, and it all changed. Let's talk about that. Here's Scalmates, right, which is an online database of, of models, which is very useful to look up and see, you know, the heritage of certain kits and when they're originally tooled and everything, and you read reviews. My reviews are on here. Usually if I do a review, it's on here on Scalmates, right? So if you have a look through Scalmates, and if you go right down to the bottom here, so if we have a look at this section here that I've um, expanded, and admittedly, this is just the modelers that have contributed, but I think it's a fair slice of the modeling community. Now, have a look at stashes, okay? Stashes. 3,316,884 kits in the people's stashes here, okay? Their wish list is one and a half million. So those people that have got 3.3 million kits, they're all wanting another one and a half million, okay? All right, well, how many have they built? Uh, 400,000, 0.4 of a million. So 3.3 million in the stash, 0.4 million built, still wanting one and a half million. How many have we started? Well, only 114,000. So 
0.1 of a million. So we're really hanging on to those kits, aren't we? 3.3 million kits are sitting in people's stashes that are not in circulation. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? So what changed? Well, came back in the early 21st century to the hobby after a bit of a break from, you know, having life, as I've discussed in other videos, marriage, kids, all that sort of thing, jobs, careers, all that sort of stuff that gets in the way of modelling. Um, and like some people, they said, we'll model all the way through, but I had that break. And I know a lot of you are the same. You've had that break and then you've come back to the hobby and it's all changed. And I discussed that in a previous video of the shock of coming back to the hobby and all the options and all the things. And there's a thing to that. Suddenly, you're on social media and people are showing you their stashes. They're going, look at this. I've got 500 kits. I've got 1,000 kits. Wow. Aren't I great? He with the most number of toys wins. <laughs> yeah. And you sort of get into this whole thing. And people say to you, you know, how many kits have you got? And I go, oh, I've got a couple. I've got two. I've got three. And they go, ah, lightweight. You're not trying. You know, you really should try harder. And there's this whole peer pressure thing that you need more kits, you know, that you are not contributing to the hobby if you're not buying kits. But that's absolutely detrimental. It's it's complete fallacy that you need a big stash like this. This is absurd, okay? And this is half of what it used to be. It was even more before that. We get deluded into thinking we must have the latest kit. We must have the latest Spitfire. You know, we've got six. But no, this new one is better. It's got a, an extra widget that you add here. It's got cup holders. Yes, it's got cup holders of the cockpit. Or well, you need that latest tank. Yeah, it's got a coffee machine that goes inside next to the gearbox. You've got to have that one. And then aftermarket people go, ooh, ooh, ooh. And they go, hang on, those cup holders they just introduced in that brand new Spitfire kit that you need, well, we've got alternate ones, yes. There's these extra cup holders that are just slightly different, but you need those as well. And the coffee machine that goes in that tank, yes, yes, we've got a better one. It's got an extra widget fumbly thing on it, uh, confabulator, right? And you've got to have that. So suddenly you go, oh, I need that new Spitfire. It's got cup holders. And, oh, well, okay, the cup holders are okay, but apparently I need more cup holders. And people are goading you into it. I mean, my friend Bernard did this to me a number of times. I'd get a kit and he'd go, oh, you're going to have to get that with this and you need this upgrade. The, the nose is one millimetre out. You're going to need this resin kit and all this. Sort of. And I'd go, oh, okay, okay. You know, these guys know more than me and everything. And I'd be buying all this rubbish. And I didn't need it. And I've sort of discussed this in another video. Now, that being what it may, the problem is, because always this new stuff comes out, because there's this big peer pressure to buy the latest bloody thing with a cup holder, right? We're all buying into this whole fallacy and purchasing all this stuff and then just shoving it in a stash. Hardly any of us are building it. It's driving the prices up, right? Because we're buying all this stuff that we don't need. And therefore, the manufacturers are getting stronger and stronger and they're producing more stuff. They think, oh, we've got to produce more cup holders and everyone's putting out cup holders. And so the kit prices are going up and they're charging more. We're actually making the hobby far more expensive for everyone else because of this knee-jerk reaction because of social media and peer pressure to have to buy the latest thing with our latest widget. It's not a good thing. It's false. It's sick. We've got to stop doing it. But that's not the only problem, okay? There's something really, really big that's hurting all the other modelers. And you and me, we're causing it. Okay, now this is a serious one. And, you know, basically put down that cup of coffee and everything and look, pay attention. We're getting older, okay? Most of us in this golden age of modelling are old buggers like me, okay? At least the guys that are watching, as if I can go by the demographics that I see on YouTube, it's basically a lot of old people. Sure, there's young people coming in, but we all know the uptake of the hobby isn't that big with all the younger generation. So it's just us old buggers. And a lot of that is we've got more disposable income, hence we're you know, buying more expensive kits, hence the problem that I've just discussed in the previous section. Now, we're getting older so we are going to, well, there's no easy way to say this. We're going to go cocked it, okay? We're going to go tits up. We're going to be no more. We're going to be ex modelers We are going to leave this mortal coil, to paraphrase a little bit of Monty Python. And that's just the reality of life, okay? We're, 
we have an expiry date. That's it. There's a point where this body just stops working. You know, it totally gives up. It stops farting. It stops belching. It stops being on YouTube. And it just basically goes for a big sleep. That's the truth. Now, I've discussed this in other videos. What happens to your stash? Well, that's not the major problem, although that is an issue, but I'll talk about it in a sec. At the moment, I'm acquiring all these kits, right? Because my build rate was 20 kits a year, 10 years ago, when I was sort of into the hobby, back into the hobby, and right into it and doing stuff, and I was getting through. I was doing lots of silly little stuff and everything. I was getting stuff done. I, didn't, I did less work and got paid more money. Now, these days, especially since the great big um, who flung dung flu that we're not allowed to talk about, uh, since then, I'm working twice as long and earning half as much, so I don't have as much spare time. In fact, I do half as many videos because it's just too hard. I've got so much I have to do just to basically get bread on the table, food and the cat, and pay the rent. So we're all sort of in that. We're all doing it tough. The world's a bit sort of crazy at the moment. Okay, so my build rate's down. Maybe yours is too, as you're getting older. Okay, so when I originally worked it out, I worked out a stash of a couple of hundred would last me 10 years. We're doing 20 a year, and that was the plan. Keep the stash no more than a couple of hundred. And then when I retire, I reckon I have 10 years left in me to do the hobby. Okay, well, as it is, I can't afford to retire. It's just not how it is. All right. My situation is I'm probably going to have to work until the day I die. There's very little choice in it. At least work part time. And YouTube could be a job. <laughs> sort of hoping. So... How much of this stash am I going to get through? All right, so I haven't got 200 kits anymore. I've got probably less than 150 now. But even that, I think, is too much. And I need to somehow in the next few years, when I'm on the pension, uh, basically get it down to less than 100. And the only way I can do that is to sell them. Now, if I didn't, if I had this huge stash, like a lot of people do, if I've got 1,000 kits, and people, there's a syndrome that's called, it's called um, more kits than life expendancy or something. There's an acronym. I don't know. You know it? Let me know. So all these kits are out of circulation for the general public and other modelers to buy. I'm being selfish. I've snaffled these things. I go, oh, I think I'll build that. I don't need six Spitfires. I probably only need one in the stash, right? That means there's five Spitfires there that other people could be building that I'm hanging on to. Admittedly, I've got some very rare kits there that took me quite a while to find, and those are sort of precious to me, and I've pulled them out of the system. But still... What if I don't get a chance to build them? Okay, they're super rare kits and there's people out there that would buy them and that would build them. And what if I expire and somebody comes along and just throws all this plastic in the bin, which is what has happened. I've seen it happen. I've heard of it happening, right? They just bulldoze it away and chuck it into the rubbish or put it in recycling. Ah, it's plastic, recycle. It's plastic and cardboard, just recycle it. They don't realise the value of it. They don't realise the uniqueness of it. I mean... When my father passed away, he had, in his later life, been collecting matchbox cars, right? And he amassed hundreds of the things. And um, his his wife took, she's not my mother, she's his second wife, she took the best ones out, she picked out the ones that were worth any money, and she basically, all the rest of it, were left to me. And I had over 200 of these or something. I gave some to... Um, my daughter in Brisbane, and, you know, I basically said, give away some of the other ones. And then I was left with about 200 when I moved house to come back here. I don't know what to do with them. They was, it's a huge amount of stuff. And I and knowing stashes are worth things and knowing they had a value, I wasn't just going to you know, throw them in the bin. In the end, I just basically put it out for someone to buy. Now, if I try to sell them individually, I might have got good money. But you need to then research and find out what they are. And I don't care. I'm not into bloody matchbox cars, as people won't be into my hobby and my models. So in the end, I just sort of gave them away for a few hundred dollars, right? 200 matchbox cars, $200. A guy bought it off me, you know, dollar each. He got the bargain of century. If he finds a couple of rare ones in there or something a bit decent, he's made money. But that, that doesn't matter. The thing is, the point I'm making is, by having, say, all these wingnut wing kits, and I have stopped that. I had over 30. I've sold most of those. I think I've only got about nine left. But even that, I've got those wingnut wings kits there. If I don't make them, and if someone throws them into the rubbish, there's nine beautiful wingnut wings kits there that never get built, that people out there would love to build. There's other modelers would really enjoy it. So my stash is an act of selfishness. Think about that. Well, if you've made it this far, terrific. 
I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And um, I wasn't trying to be too down in that last bit. It is just the truth of it. It is a stash is a selfish thing. OK, and a stash is actually changing the economics of what is sold and where things are priced and all the rest of it. So the next time you just race out and buy the latest thing, have a think about it. Do you really need it? Will you really build it? Have a look what's in your stash. I used to make it a rule at one stage that if I bought something, I would sell something, right? I'd have to, and I have to sell that first. So if I wanted that new fantastic Spitfire with the cup holders, and we all want that, don't we? We all wanted that one. Well, okay, I had to sell one of my old Spitfires, and it was gone. So that way, at least I was injecting something back into the modeling community and getting my new Spitfire with cup holders. I'm still pushing the price up, and I'm still creating the aftermarket and all the rest of it. I'm generating the problem that I talked about in my last video simply by knee-jerk reacting and buying the latest thing. But we're human. We can't help ourselves. And we see something shiny and we want it. We want it. Ooh, my precious, my precious. We're like that. It, it, it is our nature. So, you know, I understand. But I'm just sort of having fun with, but also warning you of the dynamics here. So that's it. Now, look, there's um, buttons on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, lots of buttons. Um, you know, push them. <laughs> Apparently they do things. Apparently they're sort of helping an algorithm, an algorithm which is like an artificial intelligence. Yes, because apparently humans are not intelligent enough. Well, we know that. <laughs> so they've had to create an artificial intelligence. Yeah. But one thing the artificial intelligence can't do, buy me a curry. Well, it can't eat the curry. That's for sure. No. <laughs> and if you know me, you know I love my curries, right? You know, stay this thin, a uh, fat, <laughs> you have a few curries in your belt. And let's face it, as you get on in life, it's just all about really having fun and not worrying too much about, you know, all the other stuff. So I'll eat as many curries as I like, especially if you support me there. <laughs> now, there's more modelling coming up. There will be modelling. All right. This week, I didn't really get much modelling done. I've done little things. I've, I've worked on my St. Louis and a little bit of rigging on that. And I've done some other things. And I will get the swim boot back in and the stingray as well. And I did some stuff with the stingray, but I had a disaster. But I'll talk about that in the next video. So there's all that to look forward to. Don't think I've forgotten about those things. All right. That's all I've got to say. I hope you enjoyed that. Comment as much as you like down below because there's quite a lot that we can say about this topic. Just be nice about it. So it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Adini. Basically, you've really got to start coming up better after this damn videos. You know, this is just absolutely appalling. I mean, S-H-I...